So, in the last lecture, uh, we have derived the expression for fall time of uh, C mass inverter. Today, we will uh, derive the expression for rise time of uh, C mass inverter. So, in order to find out the rise time, the output has to change from uh, low to high. So, that input will be high to low. So, initially the output was low, then it will change to high if the input changes from high to low. That is the initial condition is V out of 0, initial condition it was 0. So, if the input is high to low, means if the input is low, what happens to this uh, P mass and what happens to N mass? logic 0 implies VGS of this N mass is 0. So, it will be off VGS of P mass is negative it will be on as you have discussed earlier. So, this uh, equivalent circuit will be here there is a short circuit, but there will be resistance R P which is the on resistance. Here we have a capacitor C out. And here this part is open circuited to ground. So, this I am removing because of the open circuit. So, here the point where the output is taken V out and the capacitor is also connected here. So, when the input is low, output was initially at 0 volts, now it will charges towards VCC. This charges towards VDD. So, what is the expression for this current if I call this current as I then I is equal to across this capacitor V out minus 0. So, this is C out d V out divided by d t. This is positive sign because the direction of the current is from V out to ground. So, in the previous uh, case the direction of the current was opposite. So, we have got minus sign. This is one expression for I in terms of V out and C out. And if I consider from this V D D to this V out and this R P is the resistance, the current uh, through this R P is also I. So, I also can be expressed as direction is from V D D to V out. So, V D D minus V out divided by R P. So, if we equate these two then the difference equation will be C out into D V out by D T is equal to V D D minus V out by R P.
this is the first order differential equation with the initial condition of v out of 0 is equal to 0. By solving this differential equation, we can obtain the expression for the v out of t as, here also all these are function of t, I am not writing, is equal to v d d into 1 minus e to the power of minus t by tau p. The solution of the first order equations you might have studied in your uh, mathematics. So, where tau p is r p into c out which is the time constant of p mass device. Now, we will define this uh, rise time as initially 0, now it will increases to V d. This is V d d 0, this is V out of t, this is t. Output will changes from low to high. Okay. So, the rise time is defined as uh, the time taken to change from 10 percent to 90 percent of the V d d. This if I call as 0 0.1 V d d, you call this as time T x, this you call as 0.9 V d d, corresponding time if you call as T y then this time difference is called as rise time. So, in this expression if I substitute at t is equal to t x, what is v out? t is equal to t x, this v out is 0 0.1 v d d. If I substitute this in this expression, 0.1 VDD is equal to VDD into 1 minus e to the power of t becomes Tx divided by tau p. So, this VDD VDD get cancelled. So, this E term if we take to other side and this 0 0.1 term to this side implies E raise to the power of minus Tx by tau p is equal to 1 minus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.9 or minus Tx by tau p is equal to logarithm of 0 0.9 or Tx is equal to minus tau p logarithm of 0 0.9 this can also be expressed as tau p them of 1 by 0 0.9. This is one expression. By substituting this condition, the second condition is at t is equal to t y. V out is 0.9 times V d d. We substitute this 0.9 VDD becomes VDD times 1 minus e to the power of minus T becomes TY by tau P. So, this VDD VDD gets cancelled. If we take e to the power of minus TY by tau P to one side and this 0.9 to this side you will get e to the power of minus T y by tau p 
is equal to 1 minus 0.9 is 0.1 implies Ty is equal to minus tau p times logarithm of 0.1 or Ty is equal to tau p times if you take the minus sign this becomes logarithm of 1 by 0.1. equation 2. Rise time is defined as Ty minus Tx. This is tau p logarithm of 1 by 0 0.1 minus we got uh, Tx as tau p logarithm of 1 by 0 0.9. So, tau p is common logarithm of a minus b is equal to log a by b we will get logarithm of 0.9 by 0.1 which is 9 is equal to 2.2 tau p. This can also be called as sometimes time taken to change from low to high. So, you have got uh, fall time as 2.2 tau n. It is also called as high to low. One important observation here is between these two which one is larger? Here tau p is given by c out times r p and tau n is given by c out times r n. As I have discussed earlier that r p is greater than r n. Because the mobility of holes is less than mobility of electrons, so the resistance of holes is more than resistance of n mass. Resistance of PV uh, type device is more than resistance of n type device. So, between this tau p and uh, tau n, tau p is greater than tau n implies t rise time is greater than t fall time. So, this is the transient analysis of CMOS inverter. In this, we have derived this uh, both the rise time as well as the fall time. Sometimes, you will define uh, propagation delay of CMOS uh, inverter. So, T p is defined as T rise time plus T fall time divided by 2 that is average of rise and fall times, but here we will consider this T rise time and T fall time in a different way that is I am calling as a T r dash and a T p dash. So, T r dash is actually the time taken to change from 0 to 50 percent. Instead of taking from 10 to 90 percent, if this is VDD, this is 0, this is 100 percent, 50 percent means 0.5 VDD, this is 50 percent. So, this total time from 0 to 50 percent, this I am calling as TR dash. Similarly, T fall time dash is 
and this is VDD, this is 0, this is 0.5 VDD, this is 100 percent, this is 50 percent. This time we are calling as T fall time dash. Then the average of this is defined as propagation delay. We can easily see that here instead of substituting this as 0.9 VDD, we will take as 0.5 VDD. So, with these changes we can easily derive the expression for TR dash as tau p, there we have got log 9, now we will get as log 2 by using this definition of 0 to 50 percent we will get log 2. Here this was 9 if I consider from 10 percent to 90 percent. Similarly, fall time it was tau n ln 9 if I consider from 10 percent to 90 percent. If I consider from 100 percent to 50 percent, this 100 percent to 50 percent then it will be 2. So, this is ln 2 value is approximately equal to 0.7. So, therefore, Tp is equal to 0.7 tau p plus 0.7 tau n divided by 2 implies Tp is 0.35 into tau p plus tau n. This is expression for the propagation delay of CMOS inverter. For any digital circuits, the important parameters are the speed which is inversely proportional to propagation delay and the other one is power consumption or power dissipation. Now, what is the power dissipation of CMOS inverter? We have two types of the power dissipation, one is called static due to DC, another is called dynamic due to transient input. So, if I take this CMOS inverter. If V in is 0, it is logic 0, output is logic 1. So, what happens to this P mass and N mass as we have discussed earlier? So, the P mass is on, N mass is off. As a result of that the equivalent circuit will be something like If V in is logic 1, that is VDD, this is logic 0, this is logic 1, then reverse P mass 
is of and n mass is on. Then what will be equivalent circuit? Here this will be open circuited, here this one will be on. Here of course, we have capacitor C out. In case of the transient uh, input, if I consider the DC, then the capacitance will not be present. So, you can see that in any case, there is an open circuit in the circuit. There is an open circuit either in the pull up network or pull down network. And for DC, there is no capacitor. So, because of that, the static power dissipation is almost 0, except for that, there is some leakage power. except for some leakage bar. This is one of the important advantage of the C mass circuit. Whereas, if you consider only the P mass circuits or only the N mass circuits, there will be some static uh, power dissipation. Whereas, in uh, C mass circuit, static power dissipation is almost negligible. Now, the maximum portion of the power dissipation is due to the transient type of the input which is called dynamic power dissipation. For that if I consider the input signal as a square wave. And this is the time period 0 t by 2 t from here to here is one time period t. So, during this period V n is equal to logic 1, if I assume that this is 5 volts 0 volts. During this period V n is logic 0, that is this case here and this case here. So, in any case one of these devices on here this is on, if I take the practical case there will be some on resistance here as we have discussed it in the transient analysis. And in this case this is on, this will have some on resistance of Rn. So, there will be some power dissipation due to this uh, on resistances and capacitance, there will be some time constant. So, in order to derive the expression for the power dissipation, we will first write down the expression for the maximum charge across the capacitor. Q is equal to C V. C out is the capacitance, maximum means it is VDD, maximum charge across the capacitor is VDD. And if I call the drain current as ID, in this case this is ID, in this case this is ID. The drain current ID is given by ID current is nothing but rate of change of the charge dQ by dt. And here I am considering this total power dissipation over a one time period. 
and the maximum uh, change in the uh, q is vdd c out into vdd is equal to c out into vdd divided by t and part two, what is the expression for the power you can call this as a average power because I am considering from 0 to t this is the average of both the positive half cycle as well as negative half cycle the average power expression for the power will be idd into id if I substitute this id here then the average power is given by vdd into c out vdd divided by t or c out into vdd square divided by t 1 by t nothing but frequency of this is one of the important expression for the dynamic power dissipation of CMOS inverter you can see that average power is directly proportional to the frequency if frequency is more power is more if frequency is less power is less okay, for high speed circuits the frequency will be more so the conclusion here is high speed circuits consumes more power and dissipates more power because F will be large so P average also is large compared to the low speed circuits this is one of the important conclusion and we also know that uh, there is a compromise between uh, speed and power because speed power product is constant so this is all about this CMOS inverter so the next uh, digital CMOS circuit is uh, NAND gate because we know that NAND and NOR uh, gates are universal gates so I will take uh, two input to NAND gate here we will use uh, two NMOS transistors and two PMOS transistors NMOS transistors will be connected in parallel whereas PMOS will be connected in series these two are PMOS transistor, these two are NMOS this is CGA, this is also A these two will be connected if this is B this is also B, these two will be connected this is VDD now how to explain the operation of this NAND gate for NAND gate if I call the output as Y is equal to we should get a b bar if a and b are the inputs output y should be 0 0 0 into 0 0 0 bar is 1 0 1 0 into 1 is 0 0 bar is 1 1 into 0 is 0 0 bar is 1 for 1 1 1 into 1 is 1 1 bar is 0 
This is the two table of a two input NAND gate. So, in order to verify the operation, regardless of the number of inputs for the NAND gate, only two conditions we have to check. One is we can combine these three combinations into single condition. What is that condition? If any one of the input is 0, we have to show that output is 1. This is one condition. Second condition is if all the inputs are 1, output is 0. So, regardless of the number of inputs, if I check these two conditions, it is enough. If I consider the first condition, if any one of the input is 0, or both A, B are 0. Then if I assume that initially the MOSFETs are ideal, then what happens to this four transistors if we call this as Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So what is the status of uh, each transistor? We know that NMOS transistor will be on. if VGS is positive, PMOS transistor is on, if VGS is negative, either device is off, VGS is 0. Now, what is the VGS of uh, each of these transistors? First, you consider the Q1. What is VGS of Q1? VGS of Q1 is VG of Q1 minus VS of Q1. So, if A is 0, B is equal to 1, then Vg of Q1 is, this is gate, this is source, and this is drain. As for P mass, this is gate, this is source, this is drain of Q4, whereas for Q3, this is source. This is gate, this is drain. For Q2 also, this is source, this is gate, this is drain. So, the gate uh, voltage of Q1 is if A is equal to 0, this is 0, source voltage is VDD. This is equal to 0 minus VDD, this is equal to minus VDD negative. If VGS is negative for uh, P mass, then it will be on. So, if A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, this is on, Q1 is on and Q2 is off. Because this gate voltage will be 
B is equal to 1 means VDD and uh, source is also VDD. So, VDD minus VDD becomes 0. On the other hand, if A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, reverse Q1 is off, Q2 is on. If both are zeros, both Q1 and Q2 both will be on. Means in the equivalent circuit, here either both will be short circuit or one of this one will be short circuited if I take the ideal case. Then what happens to this Q3 and uh, Q4? For uh, Q4 gate voltage is if I take the first case A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, gate voltage is 1 whereas source voltage is 0. So, VGS is positive, VGS is positive means this transistor is on this will add a short circuit. Whereas, what happens to VGS of this Q3? This is short circuited. So, this ground potential will be available here. So, the source of this Q3 is 0 and uh, gate is also at 0. So, VGS becomes 0 as a result of that Q3 will be off. Here itself I will write. A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1. Can you easily see that the VGS of Q4 is positive? So, this will be on. For this, Q4 is on, Q3 is off. For A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0 reverse Q4 is off, you can easily verify this using the VGS, Q3 is on. If both are 0, both will be off. Whereas, in case of P mass, in one case Q1 is on, Q2 is off, other case Q1 is off, Q2 is on, in the third case both will be on. So, what are the possibilities here? If I take the worst case, from here to here, This is the way we are going to take output y. So, here in one case q1 is on, q2 is off, in the worst case both will be on. Here either both will be short circuited or one of this one is short circuited. Whereas, here either one of this one will be short circuited or both will be open circuited. In any case, does not matter either this will be short circuited or this will be open circuited or this will be short circuited this will be open circuited still there is no path to flow the current here whereas here even if one is short circuited the other one is open circuited the current flows through this to the output if this is short circuited current flows through this if both are short circuited current flows in the both the branches whereas here in any case, one of this one is open circuited, so here there is no current. As a result of that output Y will be here because there is a short circuit between the VDD to output, output is VDD, which is logic one. So, if either of A, B or both A and B are zeros, output you are getting as logic one. This is verified. The second condition is if all the inputs are at logic 1, then what happens? 
this is at logic 1, this is at logic 0 or ground, VGS is positive 2, VGS is positive 2 means this will be on, this will actually start circuit. So, this is at ground potential assuming that this Q4 is ideal, this is ground and this is 1. So, VGS is again positive 2, this is also on. Whereas, VGS of this, this is at VDD and A is also at VDD because both A and B are ones. So, VGS becomes VDD minus VDD is 0. So, this will be off. Similarly, the case of this one here this is VDD, source is also VDD. So, this is VGS of this one is 0, this is off. So, both the P mass transistors will be off, N mass transistors will be on. So, it will be equivalent circuit, we have the upper part is open circuited, this is open circuit, this is open circuit, here we are taking the output y, as here both are short circuited, this is grounded. So, what happens to output? This short circuited output becomes ground, which is logic 0. This is logic 0. So, this is the operation of a two input CMOS NAND gate. If any one of the input is 0, output is at logic 1. If all the inputs are at logic 1, output is 0. Okay. So, this is the operation assuming that the transistors are ideal. But in practical case, there will be some on resistance. If a transistor is off, it will act as open circuited. If the transistor is on, then it will offer some on resistance. If it is a P mass transistor, RP is the on resistance, N mass transistor, RN is the on resistance. So, in that case, what will be the transient response of this two input C mass NAND gate that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.